My grandfather was an inventor, and a skilled one at that. Over his lifetime he had accumulated over 40 patents that allowed him to live quite comfortably after his retirement. After he retired he was able to focus on inventing the stuff he enjoyed and found interesting, rather than stuff that would earn him a paycheck. Naturally his wife and our family supported the viewings of his latest invention, even though nobody really found them very interesting. But we loved being around him, and took every opportunity to drive the short distance to his house to see him. My grandfather wasn't just brilliant, he was also gifted with exceptional social skills, as well as an intimidating IQ. He was the kind of guy who put a smile on everybody's face, the kind of guy everyone seemed to like, the kind of guy everyone wanted to be around, and be like, and I was no exception. One day we get a phone call from my grandpa, inviting us down to the viewing of his new invention. His life's work he calls it. The invention he's been working on for the past 20 years is nearly complete. He says it should be done in a few more weeks, but just wanted to inform us on how close he was. My grandfather hangs up the phone. We would have dinner at my grandpa's house once a week every week, and in the weeks leading up to the viewing he was ecstatic. He pranced around the house with a smile from ear to ear, seemingly stuck on his face. His laugh was louder, his food tasted better. Everything about him just echoed happiness. And then it stopped. A few days before the viewing was supposed to take place, we get a call. It's my grandfather. He tells us the viewing is cancelled, and so is dinner for the week. And then he hung up the phone. After the phone call, my grandpa is a ghost. He doesn't pick up any calls, doesn't visit our family, and won't allow us to see him. My grandmother is worried. She doesn't know what's wrong either. My grandfather. The man who used to be the life of the party was now a reclusive old man who never left his room. The inventions in which he took so much joy into creating now gather dust in his workshop. The phone rings. I pick it up to hear my grandmother sobbing on the other line. It's my grandfather. He's hung himself. He didn't even leave a note. My family goes over to the house to help my grandmother clean and get rid of a few items she doesn't want around anymore. My father assigns my siblings and I all rooms to clean. I get the workshop. I walk into the workshop and the place is shrouded in a haze of dust. Relics of my grandfather's creativity are scattered everywhere, each of them adorned with their own layer of dust. I grab a few items and throw them into a cardboard box I'm holding tucked between my forearm and my hip. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be cleaning, so I look for the most dusty items first and throw them into the box. Each item lands, producing its own cloud of dust. In the corner of the room I see an object concealed under a sheet, like the way you would see those cars before they're unveiled in the movies. And out of all the things in the room, it's the least dusty of all. I walk over to the object. I hesitate for a moment before pulling the sheet from the object, revealing what's underneath. Underneath the sheet is a chair. A chair that looks like it could be a futuristic version of the electric chair. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's made of metal, like some type of chrome. It shines so bright that you have to squint your eyes when you're looking at it. In a way, it seems to give life to the lifeless room masked in dust. It's tall and intimidating, with cords and wires reaching around from the back to plug into some sort of helmet on the front of the chair. And from the helmet, some kind of looking glass hangs like a combination of binoculars and some sort of retinal scanner you see in the movies from the future. I see this throne crafted by my grandfather, and instantly know what it is. This machine is my grandfather's life work. I hesitate for a moment, take a deep breath, and take a seat in the chair. It's cold and uncomfortable. I think twice before pulling the helmet over my head, but I do it anyway. I pull the looking glasses to align my eyes and wait for something to happen. Nothing does. I turn to look around the other side of the chair and see a small switch. I flick it opposite of the way it's facing and pull the helmet and glasses over my face once more. This time there's a flash. It's more subtle than I expected but still reasonably bright. It's a flash that's about as bright and as loud as one you would see given off by those cameras in the 1930s. A single flash and nothing. I got out the chair and moved around. Nothing had changed. I thought whatever machine my grandpa had been working on was broken. 
and that the machine simply being broken is what caused him to be depressed. However, upon seeing my father enter the room, I knew it had worked. And I knew exactly what it had done. The machine that my grandfather had crafted, his life work is unlike any other machine on the planet. The machine allows you to see people, to see who they are completely without any deceptions. It allows you to see into their souls. The visions you get come to you in the same way a daydream does, two separate universes bleeding into the same reality. When you see a person after you've used the machine, you will never see them the same way again. You'll see the good and evil at the same time. The disturbing part is how little good there is compared to the evil. Anywhere you go, you're surrounded by monsters instead of people, wolves in sheep's clothing. Each person you cross is a terrible fabrication. The man who lives next door is a man who touches his daughter every night after his wife goes to sleep. Your mailman is an alcoholic who beats his wife after he gets home from work. The man you just pass walking down the street is a serial killer. Everywhere you go, you're haunted by the mythological creatures around you. But that's not what drove my grandpa mad. It's not what caused him to take his life. Because the scariest thing of all isn't what you see when you go outside. The thing that haunts you most is what you see when you look in the mirror.